Science, I'm Angie with Violet Doodles Boutique and today I want to introduce you to Marabou's new line of alcohol inks. They have 22 transparent colors, 4 metallics, an extender to help with blending and also a rainbow additive that gives your project some shimmer. I'll show you how to do these three cups. This one is a peekaboo design, this one will drip alcohol inks directly into glitter and this one we will dye epoxy using the alcohol inks as an additive. And I'll also show you how to open up the bottles that are a little different than other brands and how to fill out their color chart. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to be notified. When you first get your alcohol inks, you'll want to make sure that they're all opened, the ones that you're going to be using. The way to do that is to pinch the lid and pull straight up and then take a thumbtack and press it down into the top until you hear a click and that will open up your inks. I have all my inks open now and I printed this alcohol ink color chart from Marabou's website. I'll link that in the description of the video if you want to print one out for yourself. And I, I printed it out on glossy photo paper. This helps when you're planning out a project, you can see what colors you need. It has 22 transparent colors, those don't need to be shaken up, and then four metallics and a rainbow, plus the extender. They're all super vibrant, and I can't wait to show you on a tumbler. For this cup, we're going to start with a bare stainless cup that I've already sanded and washed, and then taped the tops and bottoms off. This one I don't need to base paint because I'm going to be using a glitter that is opaque. So the very first thing I need to do is just apply our glitter uh, with just plain Mod Podge. And then I'm going to use um, a Mod Podge brush today. I'll show you how fast and easy you can make applying your Mod Podge. I have this glitter that has a red and gold tone to it. This will be the base for a peekaboo tumbler. So the next step on this one will be to epoxy it and then we will cover it and get it ready for our inks. been glittered already and epoxied once it's smooth and then I cut out these decals with my cameo this is a file that I purchased for commercial use it already has the transfer tape on top so what we're gonna do is just apply this vinyl like I normally would Okay, the next step for this tumbler is to spray paint it white. And I will just use Rust-Oleum 2X Flat White. It needs to be flat for the ink to work right, so make sure that it's flat. The brand doesn't really matter. So I'll take this out and I'll just cover this entire thing with spray paint. I'll tape off my rims again before I do that. I just wanted to show you really quickly how I taped it off. 
my rim is all the way covered that way I don't get any paint on the inside and I left just a little bit of the stainless showing because so I want my paint to go all the way over everything that I've done so far same with the bottom and then I covered the bottom completely to keep it clean okay the paint is dry on this one and you can still see the decal underneath I just spray painted the whole thing flat white the first thing I'm going to do is go in and hit all of these little spots and stripes in my octopus. Uh, I'm going to use the metallics for those. I'm going to use the metallic bronze and the metallic copper. And the metallics you do have to shake up. Make sure you've got it all mixed. And I'm going to use uh, makeup sponges that I've just cut in half and get them in the beauty supply sections. I'm just going to dab it. And the more layers you put, the more bold your color will be. Now that the octopus is all filled in with one color, I'm going to go in with a second color. This time I'm going to use metallic copper and I'm going to have a clean sponge. And remember the metallics need to shake really well. And this time I'm just going to put a little of my ink on the corner and I'm just going to do the bigger spots along the bottom and kind of blend them up. Okay, I'm ready to do the ocean part. I like to start with my lighter colors first and then work into my darker colors. And then I'm also going to kind of do a fade from light to dark at the bottom um, with some little spots mixed in. Um, I'm going to start with Arctic, which is one of the lighter blues. And this color chart really helps. So we're basically going to use all of this row, some amethyst, some greens, and probably a little black, plus the rainbow additive. So I'm going to get a clean sponge and just kind of load it on there and then starting at the top of the cup start dabbing it on It's really light now, but we're going to keep adding layers and darker colors as we go. So for now, I'm going to stop and switch colors.
for this next step, I'm going to get a clean sponge, and I'm going to use uh, the extender, which is like a blending medium, and I'm just going to use a little to just blend any harsh lines that I see, uh, maybe from my sponges, make it a little lighter, closer to the top. Just removes a little bit of the color, kind of blends things together. It's like right here, I have a lot of little squares. And then for the very last part, I'm going to add a little bit of rainbow. You can see how much ink I took off with that blender, the extender. And I'm going to use a fresh sponge for this one too. Use the shimmer. Oh my goodness. Rainbow, I'm just kind of going like, you know, I guess imagine like an S shape, just so it looks sort of like the water has motion to it, kind of like the waves moving around or a current. I don't want to cover the whole thing, I want some of it to still be that flat color. Okay, the really fun part is removing all of the tape and vinyl so you can see what you've done. So the next thing I'll do is take some alcohol like on a Q-tip and just go and clean up here where the vinyl didn't cover the whole bottom. I'll just wipe all of that extra paint and ink off so that it's just the glitter all the way to the bottom. Same here. And then any spots that I feel like need to be touched up. Here the blue and the gold have kind of blended together. I'll just go back over with uh, the metallic bronze and fix that. But overall, this one is just about finished. 
So after a little bit of cleanup, I will mask this again and spray seal it with a clear gloss sealer. And then it'll be ready for epoxy. For our geode inspired tumbler, you'll need to start with a prepped cup. This one has been sanded, washed, spray painted with flat white, and then taped again. You'll need a variety of white glitters. I have this one that is um, an extra fine, and then a couple of chunky mixes. I have this one, it has a few different shape or a few different size flakes, hex shapes. This one has a different opal color to it with a few different size of hex shapes. And then this one that has like a diamond cut. The first step is to coat the tumbler with Mod Podge. And then I'm going to coat the entire thing with my fine, or my extra fine, white. For the next step, this is still wet, but that's what's really fun about this project is you don't have to wait for everything to dry before you move on to the next step. So I just have some Mod Podge in a cup and I'm using just a paintbrush. And I'm just going to freehand kind of a geode shape. And I'm just going right over the top of that fine white already. And then I'm going to take just my first chunky white that I have here. This one has kind of an opal, lots of oranges and yellows in this one. And just go right over the top of that wet Mod Podge. Shake off any extra and then just kind of tap it down so that way if there are any that are trying to stick up straight, you can get them to lay down. And then just outline that same spot. And choose your second chunky. This one has more blue tones to it. third time, same way. You can vary the size of your outline. So then the next step is going to be to add the inks. I'm just going to make sure I have all of my glitter where I want it. Okay, I just went to wash out my brushes and grab some gloves. Anytime I work with inks, I like to wear gloves just to help with the cleanup. <clears throat> For the geode that we're going to do, I'm going to use gentian, amethyst, purple, and we'll outline it with metallic gold. 
These are still wet and that's fine for this step. You don't have to let it dry for this. For the blue color here, I'm just going to stay within that first glitter that we put on and let it just kind of move on its own and go wherever it wants to go. If it starts to get a little bit too wild, I can tip the cup and move it and help it go in a certain direction or I can blow on it to help dry it quicker. But I do want it to coat both sides of the glitter and kind of seep underneath and branch out. And it's okay if it creeps into the other colors, they can um, blend when we get to those parts. Another little dot here. Using the different textures and different opals with the whites it gives a different effect once they're coated in the ink. So this took a lot of that yellow out, but now we have some greens with the blues. <clears throat> For the second layer, I'm going to use amethyst. Even when I'm working on this side, I will turn and peek at the side to make sure it's not running too far. I'm just checking now to make sure that all of the glitter is coated where I want it to be. See I have some white still showing right here and you can leave that if you like or you can give it another drop. For the last layer, I'm going to add purple. I am being a little more careful on the last level because I, I want it to bleed a little into the fine, but I don't want really long streaks. So you have to pay attention where it's going and give it time to settle. Now I'm just checking to make sure that it's all covered. You can see all of those really pretty shifts in the glitter. So that is all characteristics of the original glitter. So the prettier the glitter you use, the prettier this effect will be. So to do the outline, instead of dripping the gold into it, I want to be a lot more precise with it. So I'm actually going to use um, a makeup brush or a makeup sponge. So remember the metallics need to be shaken really well. And then I'm just going to dab a little on the end. And just go right up against where the purple ends. You can go back multiple times. The more layers you have, the darker and more bold it will be. Sponging it on will give you a lot more control and will keep it from running all over the place.
and I'm blending it out just a little bit just for some more definition. Okay, I just wanna add a little bit more to this before I leave it alone. So I have my Mod Podge again and a smaller brush and just where the gold ink meets the purple ink, I just wanna add some, some copper glitter just to give it a little bit more depth. So I'm just gonna go around kind of follow the line that is already there. So we'll let this dry. <clears throat> and then we'll seal it and it'll be ready for epoxy. All right, the geode is ready. I went ahead and sealed it with this uh, clear gloss and then retaped it. My epoxy is already mixed and it's just ready to get its coat. So we'll let that one spin for about 20-30 minutes and I'll take off the tape and let it spin for the rest of the day. This one will probably need two coats um, just because all of that chunky glitter is so much thicker than the fine glitter that's on the back. But as soon as it has a smooth coat then it's finished. For this project I just have a prepped cup that's been sanded, cleaned, and spray painted with flat white spray paint. Okay, that's nice and even. It's a very thin coat. And we're gonna use the remaining epoxy and divide it into some cups and add ink to those. So let me change my glove and we'll be right back. Okay, I have just these little medicine cups that I use to measure epoxy and I'm just going to divide up what I have left in this cup into each of these. So I have about 10 mLs in each little cup, which is more than I would normally use for a cup this size, but we're going to be mixing colors into them and we may not use all of it. So for my first color, I'm going to use magenta and just squirt a few drops directly into the cup. And just keep adding as much color as you want. Remember the inks are pretty transparent. We'll set that one aside. And then I'm also going to make one with Caribbean. And then in my last one, I'm going to use the rainbow. Now remember, this one needs to be shaken up really well. So now with my cup that's already coated and my mixtures, I'm just going to pour a little bit on and just kind of let it work its way and do its own thing. When using this technique, you want to make sure that you choose colors that blend well and try not to use too many colors because when they start to mix, they'll look kind of muddy.
as this cup spins, those inks are going to move and blend together and we'll just let it do its thing from here. In about 20 minutes, I will take off the tape and just clean up the rims and then let fate take over. Just wanted to show you what it looks like so far. This has only been about three or four minutes and the colors are already blending together really well. It has a very cotton candy vibe to it. And with that rainbow additive, it has just the perfect amount of shimmer. This cup is so soft and pretty. I just took the tape off and cleaned up the rims. It's still moving just a tiny bit, but overall this is about what it will look like when it's fully cured. First I want to say thank you to Marabou for sponsoring this video and letting us try out the new alcohol inks, especially the rainbow additive, which is so much fun. Now there's lots of different techniques to use these inks in your tumblers. Uh, these are just three of them, so get creative and try lots of different ways and let me know what works for you in the comments. And if you have any questions, be sure to drop those in the comments below. I try to answer every single question. And then if you have any questions with products that I use, check out the video description because I try to list everything there. Um, have a great day. Until next time, I'll see you later.